What's up, guys? Today, ah, KJ's on. All right, all right. Today, KJ Saka is going to come on. I'm going to bring him on now. Let's see what we get going. Go live, KJ Saka. Listening to some of uh, KJ Saka right now. You can go on Spotify, search KJ. Yes, my man. Hey, all right. Well, thanks for coming on, dude. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. All right. Thanks for coming on. Tim Herb Alexander. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you can hear me. All right. Yeah, everybody. So KJ was my second. No, I think you were the first or second guest that I did. But when Instagram, when we started doing the Instagram thing, they did not record these things live. So uh, they don't store the video. We would do it live, but they didn't record it. So now they did. And I was like, oh, man, we need to do one with you again so that it's it's recorded in history and you're not at the barbecue this time <laughs> right? oh man totally i don't know what happened oh that was like an impromptu thing you know i'm like hey let's just have yeah. kj on yeah now. this this thing is is you know i try to be impromptu and just let stuff happen but uh yeah, yeah you know it, it's it's turned into a little more of trying to arrange people to come hang out with me on this, you know, but um, it's all right. You never know. If I see you on there, I might jump, grab you. <laughs> but well, yeah, man, yeah. how, so uh, you're in your studio. So, well, let's see. First, I will tell the story again. I forget how, but I just saw a thing of you on YouTube doing um let's see what is it something about some of my new songs or something like a preview of my new songs so this is like five years ago i think and and yeah i just was blown away i thought it was amazing and so a year later or something i'm you know i'm like hey let me reach out to this guy and see what's up you know and so i i sent you an email somehow i guess through the youtube or no no somebody who saw you here in bellingham uh can got an email for you so that's why then i emailed you and said hey you know um i'm tim blah 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 was maybe we could do something together sometime and then you replied Mm -hmm. with yeah that'd be cool what do you play (laughs) because then my friend my friend told me like you knew who I was or something. And, and then I thought, wow, that's weird. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah. And then you, and then I told you, oh, I was Tim from Primus. And then, then you and were then I a, freaked a little out. more like uh, interesting, interested in uh, maybe doing something with me. So since then we've done some couple shows together and it's been cool, man. We've done these double drum things. Um, me and KJ together playing to I do more of a live looping thing and you had you have a bunch of uh tracks that you can trigger and play to and we just did two live drummers all instrumental and just we go for like an hour hour and a half of just space and drum and bass and dubstep and all kinds of stuff so that's KJ everybody right there he's a amazing producer uh, you have your own record label, right? Oh, yeah. Impossible Records. Yep. Impossible Records, everybody. Check them out. There's some good stuff on there. I'm, I'm, I just did. I've been running late today, so I just pulled up some quick stuff, and I found you on Spotify. You're probably on all the Apple, Spotify. Um, yes. What else? Is there more? There's probably more, right? Um. So, hey, guys, I'm KJ Saka, and I'm KJ Saka everything, pretty much. So uh, <laughs> a couple of people were asking who is the guest today. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay Sugarman. We'll um, keep, we'll keep uh, re-announcing it as we go, yeah. 
but yeah, KJ KJ Saka is the guest drummer producer, and so is is Pendulum one of your more prominent gigs? Yeah, for sure. We just released two songs, um, Driver and um, Nothing for Free. And normally when we release songs, you know, like you guys too, is you go on the road. Um, yeah. And it's a pretty crazy, like, life kind of shifting thing when I do that, because I'm here in the States, all the rest of the guys are over in London. So when we when we set off on tour, it's not just the, the bus pulls up at my house sometimes, um, you know, we, we, we have that it's, uh, or just go into, you know, a, a quick plane rides, go over to London, stay over there for like a couple of weeks, rehearse, then do a huge European thing and stuff. And so it's quite the adventure every time. And there's none of that this time. Um, so oh, I know, man, it's crazy. <laughs> got to do the release just on its own and, and, you know, throw it into the, the black hole of Spotify. <laughs> oh right, right. Well, that's all right, man. You're getting some music out there. That's cool. That's, that's it. Cool. You know. And, and did you play? Did you play on these tracks? Yeah. Yep. So you can check those out, and um, you hear me, my drums. Booga, booga, booga. Who's the? Booga. So who's the the guy behind the recordings? Because you're you're a really great producer. You're also an Ableton certified instructor right yeah in a sense yeah so, exactly yeah i mean you you teach online as well so any of you guys interested ableton is a great software it really opened up a lot for me just you know here in my studio so and i've taken a couple lessons from kj on uh doing ableton so you can do that online with him you can sign up and do an hour lesson with him and he can teach you some recording, producing, mixing tricks, anything cool like that, you know? So everyone check it out. And that, what is that through you're doing? It's like a certain site, right? Yeah, um, I do it through Live Lesson Masters and Mark Brownstein and a couple other guys uh, from the Disco Biscuits started, kind of started it right when they, right when COVID hit and the lockdown hit, everything mm -hmm. shut down and he's like, well, I got to figure this out. He started teaching bass lessons and then he's like, Hmm, how can I be a little smarter at this? And then te teamed up with his, some of his team members for, from the disco biscuits. And yeah. now they have, man, I don't know. There's like 50 teachers on there now. Um, and there's really? yoga instruction. There's, there's food, uh, cooking instruction, bass, keyboards, vocals, drums, all kinds of things. It's a pretty awesome platform. Wow. Yeah. Well, cool. what's the name again? Live Lesson Masters. Live Lesson Masters dot com. Yeah. yeah, I think they just switched to Lively. Actually, <laughs> they're going through a brand switch, so both of them work. I think Lively is open. Okay. Um, but Live Lesson Masters dot com slash KJ Saka is where you can find my portal. Yeah. Um, and that works for some people, and then also some people just email me direct or DM right. me or something like that. I'm a real easy guy to get a hold of. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so you are, well, here, let me, t I got to tell everybody real quick. So it's happy hour, um, you know, as happy as we can be in this time, hopefully. Uh, sometimes we need a break from all the stuff that's going on out in the world. Um, but yeah, I hope everybody's safe out there. But I, I wanted to say, we got yes. our new labels for our cans. This is the double stroke. And be two drummers here. We got the double stroke. Damn, look at that. Look at Man, that. I love so, the color. Just in time for live, Halloween. Yeah, it's a live show. And uh, this, That's can, so sick. this can take you back to the days when we used to go see music live. <laughs> and you can look at this and go, wow, I'm at a show. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, Dude, got there, yeah. Just did the new labels yesterday and uh, I wanted to try to see how it's doing and this is my happy hour drink today my double stroke and this yes. is, show is brought to you by Herb Cider so yes go to HerbCider.com <laughs> and you can order this and we'll ship it right to your house I mean come on what do you guys oh, think? Oh man 
Oh man, I need a case, and um, I'll drink I do, it I should, in, sorry, in my uh, drum videos. To you. <laughs> so you can drink it. I, I usually try yeah. to hook that up before, <laughs> but we need to get you some in Vegas, right? You're in Vegas. Yep, not far. Wow. I think it's a yeah. It's about the same distance as L.A. Actually, it's just just slightly over. Yeah. To the right. Yeah. It's really. I used to live there in 2000. That's when I played in Blue Man. Then. At the oh, that's so sick. Have you How seen long it? did you? Yes, I, I went to Blue Man one time and it blew my freaking mind. I was yeah, like, it did the wow. same to me. How long were you in Blue Man for? Well, I did it for a year. That's a long time. And then I, I yeah, I just kind of, I don't know, man. I guess I'm, I'm not, I'm not built to just sit in one place for too long. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> It's very strange, but uh, it was a great, great show, and I met some really great people there, man, in Vegas, and they're still there, and they're still playing. Um, but yeah, it's it's amazing, great show. What'd you think of it, man? Uh, the energy was very uplifting, and as a drummer, I was like, wow, blown away by the the spectacularness of it. I'm like, I want to do that. Um, all I could really think was, I want to be up there playing. I think that's what most drummers think when oh. they're in the crowd. They're, and when they see another drummer, they're like, I want to be up there playing too. Oh, yeah. And then the <laughs> rhythms. I, I mean, the rhythms are so incredible. They really are. They just, I, I, at the time I joined, man, I, I just like, I didn't even want to play drums. I was just not feeling it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I go get a, a job playing two shows a night <laughs> you know, <laughs> doing that, which is, it's really physical and really, I mean, it's not about playing what's comfortable for you. It's like you, you need to be at a certain visual level with your arms and your energy and all this, which was something I was never, if you watch me play, you know, I'm really boring. I just sit and focus on what I'm doing. And <laughs> that's it. I don't, I don't do any show stuff. So doing that was pretty amazing. And actually, I think the last live thing I did, I had um, my buddy Jeffrey was from uh, Blue Man Group. And he's he's in L.A. now, but for the last 10, 15 years or something. But he's been out there. He's an actor now, and he's he's on some TV shows and stuff. But, yeah, and it was funny. We, we had a little blue, big Blue Man conversation a couple weeks ago, so nice so what's going uh, on with you? Can you if you uh are you having a happy hour drink right now anything i feel like i should well it hey, is happy hour it's kind it of is. like you, you go into a bar it's friday <laughs> you've been working all week and now we're, we're hanging out so I where's feel... uh where's cory yeah hey cory cory go get him a drink come on <laughs> what are you doing Tim is asking about happy hour. It's happy hour right now on Herb Cider. We're here together. What are you thinking about pouring a, pouring a frothy beverage? Yeah, you can come say hi, too. Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. You should have one, too. <laughs> we aren't, but it's happy hour. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Right. Cool. Yeah, well, happy hour is in set. I hope has uh, got some herb cider or something enjoyable so we can have a good time right now for this hour. There we go. We got a, somebody here, Zygmo30, got a birdie juice. Nice. That's one of ours, by the way. Herb cider birdie <laughs> juice. Oh, it's happy hour now. Look at that. <laughs> Let me turn the seat. Is that hell? Yeah. Let me turn this one on. Yeah. Oh, that's you okay. look great. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, look at where I'm at. Ready? No, no, I think we're far enough apart. Oh, yeah. So you're at your studio. Yep. I got, uh, I got, I got my drums. Are we going to play some drums or, or not? I don't know. <laughs> well, I only have the electronic ones. Um, so it'll be kind of quiet. You should play drums. Hey, everybody in the chat, do you think Tim should play some drums nah, for half an hour? Come on. <laughs> You're way better than me, man. Come on. Oh, dude. Okay, let's so, so, let's 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 give some people some some more history. So we heard we heard you talk about how you contacted me, 
which was amazing. It was totally out of the blue. Hey, I got this email from Tim Alexander. I'm like, ah, Tim Alexander, man, that really sounds familiar. He's like, hey, do you want to play sometime? And I'm like, Tim Alexander. I'm like, man, I know that name. Because I always referred to you and know, know you as Tim Herb Alexander. Right. Like, I'll always have the Herb in there. And um, I'm like, um, oh, yeah, sorry, brain fart. So, so I was like, what do you play again? And I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> if this is really Tim Alexander from Primus, like, for one, drummer to drummer, is he, is he just – he just wants to jam like this is crazy. <laughs> I know. And, and then sure enough, it was you. And I got to say, Tim, like growing up listening to you when I first heard Primus, I was like, I was transferring from metal rock uh, into kind of drum and bass. Um, and you, it, or, or I should say before drum and bass, I was I was going into this hyper funk world um, like um watermelon man and like like just boot get do to do get do oh, get right, right, do right. stuff and then when i heard your drumming i'm like that's it all the big reverb and everything sailing seas of cheese and stuff i was like and i had already had the off the bands and stuff like that i'm like oh. it was like it was incredible you know actually i think i got the octa bands because of you actually i think so oh. there were the pearl ones though they were called rocket toms yeah you know mine were custom made of clear acrylic tubes by John O. Oh, Bill Dedimore, pork pie, percussion. Oh man, he made those for me, and they were custom made. They, you know, those aren't those aren't going to store and buy them. They're acryl clear acrylic, and they have a total unique sound. And uh, right now, they are sitting that whole kit sitting in Scottsdale at the Musical Instrument Museum in Scottsdale, no Arizona. So if anybody is out there, go check out that museum. It's just insane. It's like the history of music. And they have actual instruments from way back into modern times. It, it is it is a really cool place. And is the whole Tim Herb Alexander kit set up there? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, that's that, sick. That, well, that pork pie set is there. And they have like a uh, a rock, a rock drumming exhibit or whatever. And so they have my kit set up mm. facing the audience. And then the wall, I think, is a like a picture of an audience. And then it's like you're sitting behind the kit. You can see what it looks like. And... Oh, man. So, yeah. We got some friends in the chat. Mr. Mr. Ron Burley is in the house. He's you know a RB. Arbin Infinity 22. He's my amazing, amazing bestie. Chris oh, yeah. Machete and Lisa Machete is in the house. Chris is like literally one of the best guitar players uh, I've ever played with by far. Really? He, um, yeah, he's in a group. Um, we were we had a group called Conspirator, which is kind of like an offshoot of the Disco Biscuits. It was Mark and Aaron, keyboard player, and bass player from Disco Biscuits, and uh, Chris Machete and. Chris is, uh, man, talk about like the most epic Pink Floyd guitar solos you've ever heard just coming out of the ashes of like, you think the song's going to end and we like, oh, God, that's amazing. <laughs> there he is, brother. All right. Well, right on. That's cool. <laughs> well, tell, hey, uh, t uh, can you tell us what you're up to right now? I mean, what's on your you you always seem like you're really busy, and I'm just wondering, you know, what are you up to? What kind of music? Um, well, my my project Everything Must Go just launched, and we are everything must go, and that's so, out right. Yeah, you oh, can find us on. Are you on Spotify? What you uh, I'm looking at it right now. Nice. Everything must go. We have Is a song it under called... your name. No, it's it, it's not under my name. It's called okay. it's. We have two songs called "Disappear" and "Sabotage." Under everything must go. Everything must go is the what is that? The name of the group. That's the name of the group. Yep. I see. Okay, hold on. I'm typing that in. Everything must go. Uh, <laughs> maybe... Happy hour, Tim. Look. 
Whoa, <laughs> that's like a pro drink. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, so baby. What's the what's one of the songs? Uh, Disappear and Sabotage. We just have two songs on there. Everything must so there's actually artists. older. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Disappear, Sabotage. What about Eon? Yeah, that is another band that we just that we just found out about that uh, have That's has <laughs> yeah, but they have albums from like 1990 and 2000, and I think they just put their catalog on on Spotify, and it's a little unfortunate. So we got to talk to them. I have, out. you know, I have the same thing. I, you know, I did a <laughs> record back in 2013, I think it was. And, you know, I, I just self, I just self made it. I didn't have any record label. I finally went on distro kid. I got my own, you know, set up the account and I uploaded it and now it's on, but it's called Fata Morgana. And if you go on there, yeah, there's some other artists called Fata Morgana and this, <laughs> they, they made albums back in like 1999 or something. I don't know if they're still going. But yeah, yeah, there's a few of those situations where there's multiple bands with the same name. It used to be you get a, a lawyer call or a letter that says, hey, you guys got to stop using that name. <laughs> I haven't gotten anything yet. <laughs> so yeah. I hope you will. You <laughs> might. <laughs> well, you can get, um, you can get, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, there's a letter. Uh, use, using the same, uh, it's like called under the same name or something like that, where you both can have the same name legally um, and everything's fine. Um, but there's like a special letter that you guys both have to sign and everything. And everything's oh, fine. wow. And then it gets confusing if you're doing shows, people are going to have to see, oh, wait, which band is it, you know? Yeah, I mean, if this band starts to play, starts to do new music, then that would definitely be a problem. But I don't right. think they're doing any, any new music since... Uh, 20 years ago. Yeah. 20 years I, ago. I got it up here. Here's Disappear. Who's singing? Blake Lewis is on that one. Blake singing? Yeah. And then you produce this? You record With my... it and everything? Yeah, everything. All right, here it comes. I can hear it. Here it comes. Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a, it's a. <laughs> Here, everybody, listen to that. It's the snare sound. Is the. A... <laughs> yeah, man, you know what you're doing, man, when you're mixing and producing. I gotta say. Thanks, my man. It, it really sounds cool. I know, and everyone, KJ did a really killer drum pack. And I heard his demo. I was like, whoa, it was just mind blowing. <laughs> like the sounds and the way it's, it's so powerful because, you know, you got everything fighting for space and yeah, man, really cool. Yeah. Well, it's like a comb, you know, and you try to fit another comb inside the comb. That's what mixing is. That's right. what I tell people. That's one yeah, analogy. I know there's a lot of, uh, probably a lot of musicians watching this. So yeah, it's good, good for them to know. Yeah. All right. Hey, good question here. Music's a dirty word says KJ sound cypher remixes. You know, you know, Skerrick. I know you yeah. played the Skerrick when you were younger, right? Oh yeah. What did you it guys do? Wait, is that the name of your guys' band, Sound Cipher? Sound Cipher is a thing with me, Scare, and it's just drums, saxophone, and he has all these really old synthesizers. So he does all those arpeggiated rhythms and uh, all that with the old style, and he can slowly tweak them and remove accents. So the it sounds like the bar line changes. And we're Sick. all and we're all improv, but we recorded, and I swear to God, it's been like three years now. We're still, it's almost done, 
And um, yeah, that's a good idea though. I should find out about having you do a, a killer remix because that's that's what I was hearing in some of this it was like some. I kind of play more of like a heavier dubstep groove or you know stuff like that. I think it, it gets a little weird because it's improv, and we don't have any restrictions. We're not you know we could do whatever. Yeah, and it it turned out really cool. It's sounding really neat. So uh, let me find out about it. Thanks for that question. Music's a dirty word. That's a really <laughs> good idea. Yeah. I'll have to check into that, man. Oh, and man, I'm see, down. Yeah, it'd be really cool to see if you could do something with that. I'm down. Well, I mean, the last time I was messing around with your drums was from our, the audio from our show, which sounds real good. Does it? No, I showed it to you. Remember? Um, I heard what, one thing, and I, I think it was just like, it, yeah, I heard just that one part. Remember, I, um, like, on our lesson when we did a lesson. Oh, right, right. I heard what? the one part. No, well, yeah, that's I all you need to hear. Like, you just need to hear a little bit. <laughs> no, the whole show. I mean, we had a whole show, but uh, I mean, I if yeah, if you ever have time and and we could get that out, you know, we should see what we can do if it, if it's good enough i don't i don't know how it really turned out so well that's the thing and that's the thing about um you know t speaking to the people here um is a lot of times bands might take a decade pendulum took a decade to come out with the next record and at a level that we try to stay at it just has to be really really good um, otherwise we just don't put it out. Uh, it doesn't mean we're not recording. doesn't mean we're not practicing, writing songs, like constantly evolved in, you know, music. But, uh, I think th th there was a big question. Someone asked, um, um, uh, what's his butt from U2, uh, Bono. They're like, oh, you haven't put out music for so long. What are you guys doing? Are you guys retired? And he's like, listen, we are in the studio every day. That's what we do. We're musicians. We live in the studio. We eat, sleep, breathe music, but putting out something is a completely different thing. You know, got to get the whole world involved, you know, marketing, branding, like, oh my God, everything. So. Right. No, I know. I, when I, I made that Fata Morgana record, um, which is called, this is a dream and you can get it on Spotify and everything else. Um, anyways, I, I, it took me some of those riffs and like I'm doing guitar, vocals, drums. And then I had uh, some great guys down in Phoenix. The Fred Green guys played stuff on it. I had my friend Luis uh, do guitar of Tony Levin got to play on it. Uh, Sick. Not got to. I asked him to and he did it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are some great people who just put this together. But yeah, it took a long time. And some of those riffs were from 10 years before that. And now, yeah. I'm just now, it's been, oh, say, it's been 13 years. It was 07. It's been 13 years. And I'm just now working on actually recording and de like the demos of stuff. 13 years. It's like, yeah, I mean, if I had a, if it was a real project like out there, like I was touring and selling records, maybe I'd be okay. I got to work on this, you know, every day. But yeah, this whole time I've been slowly putting guitar riffs together and things like that, and it does. It takes a long time. Like Peter yeah. Gabriel, I think he take he would do this. It takes him like ten years to make a record. Tool the same thing. When yeah, I was there they've you know they have many years be between records but it used to be it used to be a one year pattern, oh, yeah. you know like all the like listening to rush was like i could count on the next year there was going to be a new rush album and i knew it, it and it, it, there it was and it was cool and it's like you got a year to come up with new interesting stuff and <laughs> not 10 you know yeah have you seen that documentary the rush documentary you know i think i did a while ago is there a new one or is it the, the original one i think it's the original one um 
talking about uh, uh, the incarnation of, of, of them when they first started, uh, their first couple records weren't really a hit, even though they were really starting to get gain popularity in Canada, all throughout Canada. Um, and then they had to really um, kind of appease the label. They're going to get dropped and they're like, you know, you hit that crossroads that yeah. most bands hit when, you know, when you get signed to a major, they're like, it's not good enough. It's got to be better. They're like, man, okay. Went back to the drawing board, added a little more, just a little more hookiness. Not much though, because those guys are way out there. Yeah. They just added that. Just they just tweaked their sound just a tiny bit and took them like at least a year to do it, like solidly in the studio right. the whole time. I think they took off a whole tour cycle, and it completely worked. They totally smashed it out of the park, and right. then the fans um, became just so die hard like your fans like primus fans yeah weird <laughs> yeah like pendulum fans there's absolute die hard fans it's so yeah. cool yeah it yeah. is it's interesting you know i grew up listening to the radio that was it and yeah you know, i didn't have a, I, eventually i started collecting records and stuff but i really only got exposed to what was on the radio and what was big and and, and it's interesting to see now in my career of how, you know, we didn't have big radio hits. Uh, we had we had a couple that got some decent play for a little while, but now, you know, that stuff disappeared. And then now you've got satellite radio, which we're on every now and then. Um, but still, you know, you, you hear the big hit bands mostly that were present at, at that time and it's weird to see that yeah we we still can go tour and play you know two three thousand seaters and have fans and have new fans too so that the whole internet and satellite music xm satellite and the, the non-traditional radio format is what's is opening up a lot for guys like you and me and all the people out there, you know, and I mean, even with my own thing, I, I, I don't know how to get it out there unless I, like I said, I put my last album out on distro kid and then they get it into all the, the digital outlets, you know? So, but then what, it's just like you said, it's sitting in the, the dark void of Spotify. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, what do you do? Uh, you just spread the word, you know, I guess. What do you, what do you, so how, how in the hell, because I've talked about this and thought about it. So I, I'm wrapped up in cords in my studio. Um, XLR, quarter inch? Uh, I got quarter inch going to my, <laughs> my guitars. Look at those. Dude. Oh, yeah. man. Is that, is that an SG hollow body? What is that? There's an SG. There's a Les Paul. And Ooh, I... what's that what's in the middle there that's the, the black SG. one oh man yeah and then there's a gibson um on the right and then a hollow body on the on the end is that right uh yeah mm. amazing it's pretty nice but anyways i've got those and um you know and like i've talked about um I don't know. What does it take to have a label, to do a label? Why don't you, you have done it and you are doing it. What, so how do you do it? How do you do it? Well, Just you try general. to knock, yeah, you try to knock down the big dominoes if you can, and then it starts tr trickling down. Like if you can get your big bands, if we can get, if you can get Primus, if I can get um, Pendulum, to say, yo, KJ Saka or, or Tim uh, has a side project and not like piss off your fans, like do it in a real elegant way. That's the big domino, like absolute big domino. And if you can nail that, which I haven't, <laughs> if you can, uh, that would be absolutely huge because you could take some of those fans who are probably going to love your side project, like 100%. And that is kind of numero uno, big domino. Um, but you're dealing with all kinds of different players you know managers um the members of the band too and it's a little it's very tricky to do that but if you could try to have your own big domino like your like for instance combining your brands like with herb zider 
and your music, um, ventures and and CDs somehow some sort of coexisting branding and uh, or not brand, well we, you already are doing co, co branding but if you could do some sort of co marketing push that would be huge it's all about marketing these days really like you know yeah. once you and I are ready to put out our music we know it's going to be good and we know our fans are going to dig it um, and you know the branding is going to be good so the biggest domino to knock down is the marketing. And it's a little challenging these days because they say there's the, 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 the album cycle doesn't really exist anymore. Um, meaning two weeks or a month or two months build up and then you release the song and you push it again for two weeks or two months after. Now it's just every single day. That's it. It's 365 um, social media uh, marketing pushes. Um, um, co-branding um or not co-branding co-marketing with with all kinds of different people you know like our stick companies our drum head companies um right. getting every single person on board getting write-ups in the magazine um you know if you can push just, out your all your emails general, it's about spreading the word and getting someone to find you on one of these outlets right well, these days, no one's going to find you. You literally have to put you plant yourself in front of them because it's so saturated. That's the right. crazy thing. Right. But we already have some developed fan bases. So if we can start with those core people and have those core people, like there's a bunch of really amazing friends and family and fans in here. Subsidian Princess is one of them. That they're, I can't thank you guys enough um, for helping spread the word and evangelizing right. what we do. Because, yeah. you know, you, have you read that book, A Thousand Fans? No. Um, oh, man. If you have a thousand fans, that's all you need. And if you have a... If you have a tr Yo, you there? You cut I, out. I got, a, cut I got out. a call from I got a call from my dad. I had to decline it. I'm going to I'm yes. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk him back. Tell dad he's got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a story about my dad here after this. Um, but, um, man, if you can get a thousand, a thousand super, fans. super fans, so they'll buy anything, any merch, okay. any merch item, uh, hoodie, sneakers, beer, freaking CDs, records. Right. You can get a thousand of uh, super fans. Uh, I, yeah, like you're probably a super fan of, of a couple of different bands. I'm a super fan of a couple of different bands. Anything they put out, I'm like, yep, I'm gonna go buy it right now. I'm so excited about that. Right. You know, let's, let's say a super fan, let's say you spend a hundred bucks a year, a uh, hundred times a thousand, that's a decent amount uh, to start. That's a hundred thousand, right? right. For, um, for just having a thousand fans. Like you said at a Primus show, 3000 fans are there every single night. Right. You know, so the idea of, of starting with with even 100 super fans can lead into 2000, 3000, 5000 people. And on the Internet these days, that's a lot. You know, we have 32 people looking at us right now. There's a ton more coming in and out and in and out. Yeah, actually, yeah, like when I finish this, I've seen numbers. That usually there's a couple thousand people that watch this throughout this hour. Yeah. Here, one, one second. So, Tony, ask a question. My dad's got a question here. I need your help really bad. I'm trying to, I want to do fried chicken. Do we put the egg up first, the flour up first, then the egg, then our seasoning crap on there, over top of it? Which way do we do it? Can you hear that? What, are you like the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. are you like the chef now? Do you remember the order for the fried chicken? Dad, dad, can you ask your question again and, and just, uh, be mindful of, of your words. You're, you're, you're live on the internet right now. He doesn't know what that means. He doesn't know what that means. Can you say that again, Dad? What's your question? You're talking way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk fast. Dad's making his fried chicken. Yeah, do we put the flour on first or the egg? Well, let's see what people flour, say. Should we put a flour on first eggs, or an egg? And then the seasoning. Yeah, oh, you... okay. What was it again? He's making his fried chicken. Flour first, then eggs, right? Is it flour first, then egg? Or is it, I thought it was. You dry the chicken with the flour, then you egg it, then you dip it in whatever the coating See? is on the outside. She knows, she knows, she, she knows she what's up. 
Oh yeah, I bombed Tim's kitchen making onion rings drunk one night. That's right. <laughs> yes. Double yes, dip. People say flour, lightest on the bottom, emergency order matters. Egg bath first. Ohio ah, Jew, Jew unit is on. Um, my one of my besties. Um, he is um, Jeremy is the drummer for Big Gigantic, who's an amazing, amazing big band. Especially, awesome. they bridge the gap between jam bands and EDM. Uh, oh, wow. It's incredible. We should tell him to come do a Instagram with me sometime. Jew unit, you know what's up? Do an Instagram with uh. Yeah, With Tim Herb Alexander, you should DM him. I'm running, get I'm it running going out on. of people I know. <laughs> oh, oh, man. What's up, Sam? Oh, my brother's on here, too. Yeah. So Sam uh, just came up. He's the bass player down in Arizona who played on my record and plays in Fred Green. So they're an awesome player. So, yeah. So 100 fans, 1,000 fans, get yeah. it out there. I mean, that's what my friend uh, Goob came on and said. He was asking... What does, uh, hold on, we got on the fried chicken thing. He asked, <laughs> what does, I think I remember, what does, here, as a somewhat unknown musician with a new album, how do I best market it? Yeah, that's a it's big, just, it's, it's a loaded just, question. Yeah, um, you just got to reach well, out to who you know and have them tell one or two people, right? And then, yeah, like a vibe. Uh, should I do the should, should I do the hardcore answer? I'll do the hardcore answer. Um, and you got to have some thick skin for the hardcore answer. You got to have twenty songs. Like if you're a brand new artist, you got to have twenty songs. Twenty? I've never heard of that. Wow. Yep, you got to have twenty songs. And you got to instead of having twenty good songs, you have to have twenty great songs. And in order to have 20 great songs, you're going to need 100 songs. You got to make 100 and see what's great out of those 20, right? Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh, man, I'm screwed. I'm only on like <laughs> six. <laughs> I've only got one with lyrics and all, pretty much all the melody. Only one. Well, let me tell you, Tim. Oh, my God. You've been around the block, and you understand what it takes to really make a really good song. You also understand what it takes to make a hit. You guys have lots of hits. You guys have so many songs that have been on the radio, so many like pinnacle songs that have boosted your career and made yeah. you uh, have the ability to all, tour all of the world. So you know what it takes. So that's the thing. We're talking about young artists. Um, so what I mean by making 100 songs is stay in the studio and be addicted to the process. You got to love the process. You got to love writing songs and you got to love finishing songs. So you can't come up to a manager or a record label or anything and just have a whole bunch of unfinished songs. They got to be good. They got to be finished and they got to be really, really good. Um, and they have to fit in, like you can't go to a metal manager or a metal label right. having country Western music. You know, it's got to fit uh, the genre. You got to be, you got to be, you got to be people smart. You got to be intelligent with your, with your choices um, kind of logical, like this song is going to fit because my song sounds like all these other artists on this label, you know, and yes. you've got, you got to have a story too. That's probably the biggest thing. You could have 10, 10 amazing songs, 20, 100 amazing songs, but what is your story? Um, and that is the secret sauce, ladies and gentlemen, amazing song, amazing story and good looking definitely doesn't help or i'm sorry it can go a long ways uh if well, you're see, i'm really man. messed up now <laughs> i don't know what i'm gonna do jeez look at me <laughs> look at you dude, what are we doing we're in the wrong uh, business no dude we're drummers it's cool we're we're, oh yeah, we yeah we're, we're good we're good <laughs> gotta find good looking people to stand out in front and oh, uh. I know. so, <laughs> so goob that's yeah it it Speaking of it's good people, time. Mr. L. But, Hornet, the uh, founding yeah. core member of Pendulum, is on the chat right now. Oh, he is. He goes around the world uh, DJing um, Pendulum oh, right all over the entire world, and it's incredible to have well, him on as come well. Come on, hey, L. Hornet, you should come on and do a Instagram with me sometime. Uh, L. Hornet, DM Tim. You got, he, he is. 
he is filled with knowledge and he, he oh, is so cool. fun to talk to. He's so nice. fun. He's a big um, fan of you too. Oh, right on. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely send me a message. It'd be cool to set something up. Um, so yeah, all you songwriters out there, man, you gotta just do it, I guess. And just, and it doesn't help to do shows too, right? Once we open yeah. up, that helps too. Um, God dang, I got to write 20 songs now. <laughs> yeah, oh, the more man. the merrier. I thought I was going to write six just mind-blowing tunes, and that was it. Cool. Well, the thing about it, in order to get to your six mind-blowing tunes, there's going to be some garbage ones, let me tell you. Oh, come on. I don't make garbage songs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no well, way. no, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're royalty, Tim. You know, oh, God, you keep the on. standard high, man. You keep it high. Oh, Lord. So, so you are, you have Impossible Records. I mean, what is it? So you, how do, how do people, like, if they wanted to have a label, like, what does that mean? Do you make some music and, you know what I mean? Rather than, do you have a distribution system for your label and then you can sign artists that you like? Yeah, exactly. So I started the label for two reasons. Um, the first one was a selfless one, the first, and the other one was a selfish one. Um, I wanted to help people. People kept on sending me tunes, uh, good tunes, aspiring producers, young producers, um, talented producers, producers who've been in the game for a long time. They're like, I can't get my music signed. You know, here, what do you think about this? I'm like, this is an epic track. That was the first and foremost. The second is... I couldn't get my stuff signed either. I'm like, man, like, how hard is it to get one of my friends who own all these different record labels and dubstep and drum and bass and ADM to sign one of my tunes? And what I realized through that experience was I got to continue to make better tunes. Um, um, I love it when people send me tunes. Um, and I want to help these people out. And I want to get my own music out there. Uh, instead of taking six months for finally the deal to happen. So I started Impossible Records, and it was actually quite easy. Downlink from from um, my band Destroyed, he started Uplink Records um, just before I started Impossible Records. And I talked to him. I'm like, hey, man, I'm thinking about starting my own label too. He's like, dude, do it. It's not that hard at all. Um, and I can put out music anytime I want. I have Now I have connections uh, in relationships with press and the distribution and playlist people and all kinds of stuff. And people send me tunes and then really good producers come to me. And then we do collaborations yeah. on, on the I've record label. That. Yeah. Those names, you work with some pretty big names. Yeah. And I've helped some guys like get way more popular than me. And I'm like, that's like, like the most epic thing in the world. That was my number one goal um, as uh, for, for as like a protege, as a drummer to train a drummer, uh, you, you know, like the apprentice, you know, like the, like the master and uh, teaching uh, uh, the samurai warrior, you know, and then I finally become a, a true warrior um, of the samurai. And it's like the greatest feeling ever. So um Passing on the the the, the um, knowledge is why, another reason why I started Impossible Records and why I teach right now too. Um, plus so is your is your yeah. distribution network mainly going through the digital formats? Do you even make physical product? No, or? we've never made a CD or or record. Got uh -uh. It. So so different now, huh? Totally, vinyl still coming back though. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, I like that. Do you, um, yeah, Soya, my, uh, my old drum tech, Tim Soya's here. He's, he says, uh, Spotify, et cetera, not paying shit for songs being played in the millions. Yeah. So I know I've, I think about that all the time too. You know, you got this company that I, I wonder how it compares if someone, one person buys a record for, 10 bucks a cd and played the song you know how how much would they 
how often would they listen to that song to determine like, well, if you were on Spotify and one person plays that song, you know, does it equal out in any way? You know, do you know anything about that? Like, how are they coming up with these, these numbers to pay artists? Oh man, the Spotify royalties for one play, I think it's point zero 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 one or something like not that. Not even, not even one hundredth of a cent. Yeah, it's very, very low. Um, so, so that's. I think yeah. you make a thousand. They they say you make about a thousand bucks for a million plays, and it depends. It's actually a sliding scale, which is very gnarly. Um, right. The the highest, highest, the highest of highest streamers get all the money, like all of it. So you could right. have 10 million streams and still actually not make um, $10,000 or $100,000 or something like that, whatever you're supposed to, whatever your allotment is. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's not balanced at all. Um, I, bet into, their, I bet their yeah. idea is that well, yeah, because we're we're exposing you to hundreds of millions of listeners instantly, right? That's probably their argument versus saying, you know, oh, well, you should get the same amount as if you sold a CD, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's other ways to make money, you know? So Spotify is, is the loudspeaker. It can really help you uh, get in front of people who would never hear your music just like you said. So all of a sudden you could be big in South America um, or France or something like that. And you've never ever been there. Um, right. That's one real fun advantage of Spotify. Um, but people shouldn't bank on it um, to pay the bills. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, you can make more in merch. You can sell your merchandise on Spotify. Actually, you have a little link there. Oh, really? Sell some t-shirts and stuff. Yep. Yeah, I'm at your Everything Must Goes artist site. I don't see any cool pictures of you looking hot. <laughs> so this, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, so we're. I'm not keeping my identity um, private. I'm letting everybody know it's me. Alex is letting everybody know it's him. There's two of us. Okay, Alex is from where? Seattle. And okay, he's a is badass. He, is he in another band or, or, or what does he do? We met through Impossible Records, actually. Um, I signed a couple of his tunes and he's, oh, okay. in a, he's in a band with his wife and brother called Super Square. Oh, okay. And they're super badass. So badass that I, w I couldn't, I wasn't really making the music that I really wanted to make. Um, I wanted it to be better and i don't know just have something that wasn't me you know if you do music s solo it's just you and yeah. it's that's what's so nice about a band and collaboration it does help yeah influences it does help to get a different perspective for sure I get yeah up, i get caught up on my own stuff all the time and that's why it's so slow is because i i have to switch mindsets and pretend i'm you know the other member and like no i, I, I want to do it this way and then think of it from that angle and then it and then it changes stuff for sure so yeah they're your accountability partners too you right. know yeah you need that we need that especially with like you know before covid just the digital world p people are like getting more and more busy and like it's just like quote unquote busy work it's like well what are you really doing i i, I I don't know about anybody else, but I found myself doing that. I was like, man, I was just running around all day today, but what did I really get done? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to cut all this crap out. Like I've cut out scrolling. I'm not scrolling anymore on Instagram. Um, and that helps. And Twitter and stuff. By all means, everybody in the chat, it's important for you guys to scroll to see what Tim and I are doing. It's very important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if Tim and I uh, are scrolling we're not making music um and that's what we need to be doing you know or do or producing beer uh cider i should say sorry about that <laughs> yeah cider um, I, yeah it's really important to do that and as long as it's not detracting uh distracting you from 
what your true goals are and your calling in life, you know? Um, right. I definitely talk a lot of philosophy each day with my students. Um, sometimes the lesson literally just turns into a, a hour long pep talk to keep them on the path because we're talking all kinds of stuff about like we're bridging on hope. It's like, okay, well, if there's no more money in music, if there's no shows, then you still don't make any money by selling millions of, or millions of, of streams on Spotify. What do you do? There is hope though, because if there wasn't music, the world would have collapsed a long time ago. You know, like we create art for people to have the ability to take a deep breath and turn some stuff off, turn the political stuff off, turn their job off, turn their, t turn their, their relationships that aren't going so well, turn, turn, turn that off for just a second and devour some art and, and things and, hopefulness you know and then they can come and they can rejuvenize rejuvenize themselves and go back to their relationship and say hey man i'm sorry i did that you know it's like make up with people and you know i didn't really mean that or whatever you know music heals and yeah that's why we're in the business really yeah it feeds the soul too you know i notice it i go through times where i sometimes i just need to just sit and just by myself and hear some tunes you know so yeah, and then it kind of resets me a little bit. So it's nice. Hey, four minutes left. Thank you for coming on again. It's really cool. Now we got one recorded. And it's yes. there. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yes. And uh, yeah, you guys check out KJ's stuff. Everything must go. You And he's also on Spotify um, as KJ Saka too. You've got your own albums he's done. They're really good. I, I listen to them. When I'm like traveling, I'll be on a plane. I put I put some of your stuff on to hear the drum and bass and the cool, just you know, spacey stuff going on, and it's really good. So check him out. And uh, yeah, if if you're ever in uh, Vegas, KJ, you gotta make you some fried chicken with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my dad's the best at fried chicken, but he really? can't quite remember if it's the flour or the egg first. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, well, right man. on, man. Thanks for coming on. All right. Do you still have some beer left, Tim? Uh, I have some or cider. Some, some cider, I mean. I yeah. I'm so sorry, Tim. I keep on messing it up. This was brought to you by Herb Cider. You can go to HerbCider.com and check out the brand new can labels we have coming out. Same formula. This is our dry. No sugar in this. No sugar, Amazing. guys. So this is a really great, great drink. Two minutes left. Okay. Herbcenter.com. Check it out. Go to what's the lesson site? Uh, live lesson masters slash KJ Saka. Yeah, or live lesson masters.com slash KJ. And how long is that going to be going on? Well, I'm not sure. You know, I'm actually ramping up the teaching. So um, I'm coming out with a huge curriculum uh, next year as well. And so if you can't um, find that link, you can just DM me here. I'm easy to get a hold of. If you want production lessons or drumming lessons, I am. I have a very, very small amount of them left. So jump on in there. Right on. Well, cool. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon, man. So good to see you, my man. All right. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Bye. See ya. All right, everyone. We're down to the last minute here. Thanks for coming on. Uh, oh yeah, I saw Chris Peeler came on. No, we did not talk Herbstock. Herbstock was our festival that we had last year and Fred Green played and KJ came and did a show with me, double drumming. And that was really fun. So, um, all right, 40 seconds. Check out herbcider.com. We got cider going right to your house. All you got to do is go on, order it, and it'll be there. Check it out. All right, guys. Thank you. And this will be uh, up on Instagram, and I've got the YouTube channel going too. So like everybody said, you got to hit that subscribe button. Check it out. And, you know, we do – I like doing these live, so they're fun. All right. <laughs>